In the diagram, we are given a parallelogram and they tell us that E and H are the X and Y intercepts. We're told that these two lines are parallel and BE is perpendicular. Okay, so we can see that. And the length of AD is four square root 13. So everything has been shown on the diagram. Question one, calculate the gradient of diagonal AC. Okay, so we can see the diagonal AC. Very easy question. We know that the gradient formula is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And so for the gradient of AC, that would just be, now you can choose this as your starting number or these ones, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go 10 minus minus four over minus 12 minus 16. Go ahead, type that in and you get negative a half. Question 3.2, calculate the coordinates of J, which is the midpoint. Okay, so there's the midpoint. Now we know that the midpoint formula is X1 plus X2 over two and then y1 plus y2 over two. And so that's gonna give you minus 12 plus 16 over two and 10 plus minus four over two. And so that's gonna give us an answer of two for y and three for the, I mean two for x and three for y. So the coordinates here will be two and three. 3.3, show that AC has a certain equation. Okay, so we know that it's a straight line, so we see that y equals to mx plus c. We already worked out its gradient, which is m, uh, as a negative a half, so we can just fill that in. Then to find c, you need to plug in any point on that line. So you have options here. You can choose this one, this one, or you can choose that one. And so I'm just gonna go with the two and the three. And so three will be equal to negative a half times two plus C. So I just plugged in that point into this equation. And three would be equal to negative one plus C. And so C should be equal to four. So therefore Y would be equal to negative a half X plus four. Oh, and it said show that, fantastic. So we've done that one, correct? Next one, write down the coordinates of E. Now E is the x-intercept of that line that we have just worked out, which is this one over here. So to find an x-intercept, you make y zero. So to find an x-intercept, you make y zero. So we're gonna say zero is equal to minus a half x plus four, and then that's gonna be a half x is equal to four. And so if you had to go work this out, x should be equal to eight. So when they said write down the coordinates, please don't just say eight. You gotta say eight and you gotta say that the y is zero. 3.5, determine the equation of dg. Okay, so dg is this one over here. Now remember that dg is parallel to ac. So because they are parallel, they have the same gradient. So we can say that the gradient of dg must be the same as the gradient of AC, and that's just because they are parallel. So we know that the equation of DG is gonna be Y equals to MX plus C. However, its gradient is gonna be negative a half because it's the same as AC. Then to find C, you just plug in a random point on the line, and this point over here is on the line. So we can say minus two equals to minus a half times minus four plus C, and so that's gonna be minus two equals to positive two plus C. And so if you were to work out C, you would get negative four. And so the final answer would be Y equals to negative a half X minus four. 3.6, show that the perimeter of A, B, C, D is equal to this ugly number over here. So, okay, so they want us to show that the perimeter. Now remember guys, perimeter is the total distance all the way on the, outside. Now we don't have to go calculate all of the lengths because they've said that it's a parallelogram and we know that opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. So if we know that AD is four square root 13, then we can also say that BC will be four square root 13. So we can say that BC will be four square root 13 and that's because of opposite sides of a parallelogram. Well, we can't say parallel, my bad, parallelo, 
And then what some textbooks do is they just say gram. Now we need to go calculate the lengths of DC and AB, but we only need to do one of those because we know that they are equal. So I'm gonna go work out the length of AB. So the length of AB, we could calculate using the distance formula, which is like this, and then plus Y2 minus Y1 squared. And so that would be, and so we could fill in, for example, minus 12 minus eight, and then 10 minus eight. Go ahead, type that in. And so that's gonna give us two square root of 101. I wouldn't round off now because that's not the final answer. And you can also see that they've got these weird things over here. So we would leave it like that. Then we could say that um, DC is the same as AB. And that's also because of up sides now, I felt a bit weird saying parallelogram. Some textbooks do do it like that, but I remembered, it's been a while since I wrote parallelogram. It's, I write it like that, palm. Opposite sides of a palm um, are equal. And so now what we can do is we can say that the total perimeter would be two times four square root 13 plus two times the square root of 101. Sorry, two times two times two square root of 101. And if you work that out, you're gonna get eight square root 13 plus four square root of 101. And that's exactly what they asked for over there. And the last question, prove that BEGH is a parallelogram. Okay guys, now the easiest way to determine if it's a parallelogram or to prove that it's a parallelogram is to always use the midpoint of the diagonals. So what you do is you go work out the midpoint of both diagonals, and if it's the same, then it's a parallelogram. So yes, you could use parallel sides and all of that other stuff, and you could prove, prove distances, but that's the longest way, guys. The quickest way, get the diagonal midpoint and then see if it's the same. So for example, I'm gonna look at the midpoint of BG. So here, if I connect BG, I'm busy getting the midpoint of that. Oh, but I need to know what the coordinates of G are. Okay, so let's quickly go get that. So we know that G is a point on this line over here. So we just make X zero. So we'll make X zero in that equation and you'll get negative four. So the coordinates of G will be zero, negative four. And then, okay, we've got the coordinates of B. So now we're gonna work out the midpoint of BG. And so that's gonna be um, eight plus zero over two, and then eight minus four over two. Because remember the midpoint formula, sorry, I should have written that down, goes like this and like that. And so if you had to go work that out, that's gonna be four, and here I should have said plus minus. It's the same thing, I just don't wanna confuse anyone, and two. So that's the midpoint of BG. Now we need to go work out the midpoint of EH. So we need to get the coordinates of H, but luckily we also remember that the equation of the equation of AC, remember we worked that out earlier on in the question and we got Y equals to negative a half X plus four. So to work out the coordinates of H, we know that that's where X is zero. So we can just take this equation over here, make X zero, and we would find that that's equal to four. So the coordinates of H will be zero and four. And now we can use the midpoint between those two points. So we can find the midpoint of HE, and that's gonna be equal to zero plus eight over two, and four plus zero over two. And so that's gonna give us a value of four and two. And I went and erased the other one, but if you remember the midpoint, when we looked at the midpoint of BG, we also got four and two. So because the mid the, the midpoints are the same, we can say therefore B E G H is equal to a parallelogram because the diagonals, the diags, whoops, let me write that nicely. The diags bisect. So when the midpoints are the same, it means that the diagonals are bisecting each other, and that is, a, that is the easiest way to prove that something is a parallelogram.